Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, attending this talk. So today uh, we will be presenting um, our talk on growing communities, eliminating barriers to contributions. Um, and I have here uh, with me, uh, Daniel. Uh, so Daniel, if you wanna uh, give an introduction. Sure. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today for this for this talk. My name is Daniel Izquierdo and I'm one of the founders of Viterdia, currently holding the position of CEO, um, active member of the KS community and the inner source commons. Perfect. Um, I'll go ahead with a quick introduction. My name is Miriam Guzani. I'm a, a PhD student at Oregon State University. Uh, I just recently finished my internship at Microsoft Research, and I've been working with Daniel for the past year and a half on, uh, on this research, and uh, very happy to be presenting our results here. So why are we here? So we, uh, as a reminder, we are at the OSPO track, right? The open source plan office track. Um, so the question we had on the table when we were presenting this was, okay, we have, we've done a research, we have certain numbers, so now what, right? So how, how can this be used by others in the open source community? Um, what we discovered at the research was that there is, th there are barriers to contribution um, and the research specifically uh, so it's a, a set of mitigation strategies provided by the community. And then at the very end, what we have indeed is a framework that we can all reuse um, and have like a model that we can all apply in, in each of the projects. So from this OSPO perspective, if we are part of an organization that is willing either to invest or to adopt open source technology, or even to, to increase the uh, contributors to their open source projects, the thing is that, uh, inclusion being welcoming is one of these key things to have in mind so as part of the to-do group probably you're aware of this there is a specific uh, guidelines and chapters discussing about diversity and inclusion what we bring here as uh, say as a new thing to do for, for for all of us is this framework where we can think of so uh, there are there are some ways of thinking that we can consider so one of them is the outdoors perspective. So uh, from the company perspective to, to the rest of the open source ecosystem, there are things of, well, how can, I bar how, how can I lower the barriers to contribution to my projects? Are there barriers? Are, are, we, aware, are we aware of the existing barriers? Um, initially, what we are interested in is in raising awareness into the organization that this is happening. So there are barriers. In this case, the analysis that we are doing and the results will present are the application of this framework into the ASF community, but the point is that it can, this can be easily extended to any other open source foundation project or, or, or organization ecosystem that you are part of. So the goal would be as well to find certain key indicators that we can track over time. We are giving some of them in the case of the of the ASF. And from the point of view of, of the indoors, there are there are other things right that we can we can discuss. So specifically in the case of the outdoors or or, or you know the more the public relations of our corporation. So probably one of the questions that we have is, are there barriers and what are the usual ones? Because if once we understand this, then we, we can think of uh, specific policies that we can put in place, right? Indeed, specifically in the case of, of the ASF, for the research framework, we, we discovered 88 different barriers that were split into three main categories. We'll see, we'll see about this later. Uh, then the other one that I mentioned was, uh, well, we have, we need to raise this awareness so there are different challenges we need we want to characterize this and initially what we are providing as well in the in the framework or as part of the results of the asf research is the agent that can facilitate this this mitigation specifically in the case of the asf the framework that we uh, produced was uh, split into process technical and social as, as main categories but others can be added later um, and finally, the, the key indicators, right? So one of the goals of the research in this case was to, to look for the top barriers to contribution. But uh, given that any open source project, any foundation is different from each other, the barriers that we may found at the ASF might be different to others, right? So uh, a good thing to have in mind is to have the diversity numbers, keep track over time for them, look for correlations. And in this case, that and, and this is part of usual research and, and, and in the open source industry, there are certain uh, barriers that we see that uh, are kind of we, we see once and again as the language, the gender, education is another relevant factor that we, we have to take in, in mind. 
And then from the indoors perspective, so how how we can think of of these barriers and and and, and, and be part of the solution is uh, about uh, what what can we do from uh, a more corporation perspective. So we can work on the outside, but then we can work inside with with our our developers, our uh, you know. Uh, management team, et cetera. So for this, uh, the, the main, the main uh, things to have in mind are about participation guidelines. So it's not only about understanding the technology, it's not only about understanding the workflow, it's about actively training uh, teams or pick the contributors panel, understand how perhaps underrepresented communities are going through our uh, contributors panel or, or what we call sometimes the, the onion analysis, right? So who are the core developers, the regular developers? How easy is for people and for underrepresented communities to 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 advance in the, you know, in, in the funnel for contributor to become maybe a core contributor at some point, have certain focus on volunteers. So this is something that should be done initially at the at the corporation when, when running specifically, when, when working in open source projects, either you are consuming or, or producing. Um, then address the challenges. So in the previous slide, we discussed about if, if there were barriers, right? And we see in the in the ASF that we we, we were discussing about 88 different. And, but then you need to address the challenges. So what are the mitigation strategies that you will put in place? So in this case, in the in the research that we are that we see today is uh, we we are providing different mitigation strategies. All of them provided by by the ASF. Um, uh, uh, contributors as well. And then finally, probably one of the key aspects of, of, of the open source program office at any corporation is to become a trusted um, a trusted department, right? A trusted uh, partner that you can think of when, think, when dealing with open source. So this diversity and inclusion uh, branch is another topic of, of importance. So how to create assets, trainings that others can consume, look for good practices, etc. So this is this is part of the motivation of all of this. So summarizing basically what we wanted to bring today is not only the results, but why this is another useful tool that you can apply at your OSPO, basically. And for the framework, we were uh, what we did was these 88 barriers were split into three main categories. And then these are at the same time split into different levels. So basically, we have like a, a nine options, let's say, where, where you can position each of each of the barriers. So this is this is useful to characterize the existing barriers, and then we can add new ones, move ones from from one place to the other, and so on. But well, Marian will will provide more details in in this case. Yeah. Um, so like you said, Daniel, uh, splitting these into these. Um, categories and in, in, um, in these levels. And this came really ground up from the data, and we'll discover this later on, on um, just how to replicate this. Um, but the idea is, um, so as we see here, it's a little bit of the, at least our distribution, according to the ASF data of these challenges that we found. Um, so what we could think of is process technical and social are the types of challenges. Uh, what what are the challenges? Is it a challenge related to how how uh, contributors are contributing, like the process of contributing? Is it a challenge related to the technical aspect, like maybe not being familiar with a certain language, or maybe setting up the environment, etc.? Or is it a challenge that is related to the social interaction and communications? Uh, from the levels perspective, it's about it's all about agency, like. Who can fix this? Uh, and this is the question we ask when we're trying to um, put or categorize a, a challenge into a specific level. So if the challenge is about the person, like maybe not being an example would be, um, if I'm not familiar with Java and the project is, um, is in Java, then that's one of my individual challenges to like um, learn more about it and, uh, and be able to contribute. A project challenge would be a challenge of maybe how the project is presenting the information or the architecture. And that's something that the project could fix to make things better. For the foundation level challenges, uh, for example, in Apache, a lot of the things that came up were um, some of the Apache ways that might be a little bit um, confusing for certain people, especially if they're new. Uh, so this would be something that the foundation could fix. So really thinking in this level about agency, yeah, into fixing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and to kind of wrap it up, it's like levels is 
who has the agency to fix? Um, and the type of challenge are those process technical and social. And this kind of makes this framework a little bit more um, actionable in terms of making interventions or implementing solutions, because then you know who can implement the solution and at which, um, in which type of solution you're trying to implement. So for our specific research, um, we looked at uh, data from the Apache Software Foundation uh, from both survey, a large survey and interviews. And this involved a lot of iterative uh, work on, on, uh, on this data, which ended up uh, resulting in 88 challenges and 48 strategies that are organized within this framework. And um, this is our team of like uh, amazing people who, who helped make this happen. So um, looking back at uh, when we looked at the, this data and um, these uh, surveys, we um, looked at what, are, what is our average ASF contributor? Like what's the average profile um, of contributors? Um, and this is where DNI also um, comes up a little more is it's, it's mainly a 40 year old man who's confident in English, born and lives in the US, has a bachelor degree, uh, is volunteering, so no compensation, has approximately one to two hours of, uh, for volunteering, has been in the community for five years, did not have a mentor and faced no challenges. Um, and this really brings up a little bit more the question of diversifying and um, having a diverse community and how important lowering the barrier is to make that happen. So some of the, some key insights uh, that we found in our research um, going again to those levels and, and types is that um, because we looked at the Apache, uh, which is a big found open source foundation, the majority of the challenges occurred at the foundation um, in project level, a more than the individual level, which uh, there's a lot of research on that as well, um, like a lot of prior work. And the majority of challenges at the foundation level were related to the process. Uh, and this is followed by social interaction and then technical. And this is also interesting because um, a lot of the challenges we found are ongoing challenges. So people are experienced, but they still face these challenges related to the process, uh, the governance model, and uh, the social interactions as well. Mm, and this is this, and this is a really interesting thing to to consider because we, uh, depending on on where we are working at, where where we tend to to think of is that well, if if someone is 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 kind of adopting the technology that is that is open source project that I'm donating to the community or so, uh, the main issues will come will be around the uh, technical level, how people may understand this new programming language or how to how they will understand the architecture and documentation and everything. But if you think about the about the the, the findings that we have at the ASF, uh, the majority of those challenges takes place at the foundation or project levels which are not that much related to specific uh, lack of expertise or lack of uh, skills maybe at the individual level, but those are related to internal processes of how projects work or how the foundation works, which is really, really, uh, you know, that was surprising for me indeed. Yeah, exactly. And it does bring up the question of how can we make those better and how can we, um, provide interventions that make those better. And, and just one example here of, um, so this conceptual model, like this framework um, is this long framework, which you could um, use this link to look at like the paper and, and some of the documents we have for a more uh, complete picture. But this example of challenges that are related to the process. Um, so we took this sna a snapshot of them and some examples are for the Apache way, for example, there was um, one of our survey participants uh, mentioned that it's also not super clear how the idea of rough consensus works and how to proceed if rough consensus cannot be reached. Um, so the idea of voting and how this voting process works, um, this was mentioned as a challenge for people to navigate and, and especially if, if, they're, um, if they're new to the Apache or even to the project. Uh, this could be even more, more tricky to navigate. Um, another um, interesting um, quote here, just as, a, an, as an example, is switching for one, from one man coding to a community approach is sometimes hard. 
Um, and this is particularly relevant when um, like projects and in industry move to open source, there's like a shift in paradigm in a way. So from working uh, on your like project or on your so far on your own, you're now in a community where there's this um, coding as a community that's happening. So that takes a little bit of a shift um, in the way we do things. And just some strategies about the process that um, we've noticed um, where really a lot a lot of it is about uh, providing providing clear guidance on the governance process, like the voting process, being able to um, provide these guidelines, provide some explanations about it, providing regular training and updated training um, is also helpful. Um, that way people that wanna be trained in certain things can, and if they're familiar with it, then, then that's great. And, um, for a more specific um, suggestion we, we've got is from is for providing training and best practices tool for reviewers, just to make the reviewing process a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more equitable, and just uh, kind of easier to navigate. And for the social challenges, um, so um, in here, uh, some of the examples um, is uh, this quote, for example, where um, a contributor says, I was happy being a committer, but once I saw all the member discussion in the list, I was overwhelmed and have never commented on the members list for this reason. And this brings up a good point where um, really like um, reading through a mailing list could be overwhelming for someone or the way the communication goes back and forth uh, could, be, could, could become a challenge that someone could refrain from participating. So really making sure these communications are, um, are being welcoming and inclusive of people just to help them get that extra courage to, to start, especially if they're uh, being added as a new um, committer or being added newly to the list. Um, another one that, uh, Daniel, you mentioned language also as a factor earlier. And um, so another one was, it is still hard to understand phrases, slangs, or irony from native speakers on operational lists. And, and this could, could, could be unnoticed um, if these peoples are not um, integrated uh, into the discussion of DNI, because we cannot, we might not be aware, like somebody who uses certain flip phrases or slangs might not be aware that somebody else might not understand what they meant. Uh, so this is an interesting thing to keep an eye off, just as an example as well. Mm -hmm. And um, to blink right to that last one is, really making sure of including the minority groups in the DNI discussion. If you're discussing diversity and inclusion, try and include as many uh, diverse committer and diverse people as you can, because you'll get their insight and um, their challenges that you might not be aware of. Um, so that's a very important step to just keep moving this forward and just have their, their thoughts on, 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 these, um, on the state of DNI. Um, also, um, promoting uh, minority focused online groups, just, just having that um, openness about creating minority, like a minority focused group, um, which could help have um, have certain like for contributors to have someone to look up to who's similar to them, maybe help them with advice or help them with um, how to be successful in, in certain ways or who to communicate with or who to ask for help. So this could be really important. Um, and another one would be to also leverage both public and private channels and disclose their visibility. Um, so just having uh, those two options and being able to uh, work with that, but also making sure um, the other party knows um, what visibility they're at. Hmm. Um, uh, yeah, so this is, this is like a summary of the insights that we have from, uh, from running the, the ESF research and specific recommendations that we came by uh, analyzing the community and together with the community with all of the mitigation strategies. So these are specifically for the ASF use case. Uh, in your specific use case, those might be slightly different. So it's a matter of uh, applying the, the framework, let's say. Um, there is There are some slides uh, around the uh, replication, how you can run the surveys, the interviews, interventions and, and the quantitative approach that uh, we we have left here in the slides so you can have a look at it we prefer to, to focus on the 
on the results themselves specifically, but just to be sure that you have the complete pic the complete picture here, we have left like the the phases for the survey design, the response rate, the number of uh, you know the people involved, the researchers, and all of the analysis, the total time that's the, that this analysis took in the in the case of the of the survey, and then uh, in the same way for the interview design. Uh, so how long this took and the number of people involved. So you have a, an idea of the of the effort, the, the timeline of the analysis um, and everything. I don't know, Marian, if you'd like to highlight something specifically. Yeah, no, no th this is this is perfect. So most just to say that this data came ground up. So it came from um, our interviews and surveys from what mm -hmm. the contributor were mentioning and building this. Um, into categories and challenges. And all this could be found also, um, the survey questions in um, all this data could be found in the additional links. Hmm. Yeah, and with respect to the quantitative approach, what we did was to analyze 12 of, of the most mentioned projects in the in the survey. And for this, we've been using Grimoire Lab, which is a, a chaos project, part of the Linux Foundation. Uh, well, we used specifically Viterbi Analytics, which is the commercial service, let's say, of, of of Grimoire Lab, but this is this is kind of architecture where you gather a lot of data from these repositories, either GitHub or Git repositories, uh, Jira, um, and GitHub tickets or GitLab or any other kind of, of data source. And then finally, you produce certain numbers around gender that we know that there is there are uh, uh, limitations to the study. That but this was useful to uh, to illustrate, let's say, the problem from the very beginning and say this is happening, right? So we can see at least some numbers, even given the, the limitations that we are all, all aware of this. Extra ball here, part of the discussion is is taking place in a panel discussion that uh, is, uh, again, pre-recorded, but I suggest that you go to the talk or to the Viterja booth, and then you will find Mariam or Georg. Well, please ask them questions, really tough ones, and so on. You can ask questions right now. Um, a bit about Viterja, so uh, we provide a specifically uh, OSPO services, so uh, go by the booth if you are interested in those. Um, just to say thank you all for your time and thank you all, all of the participants here. Yeah, thank you, thank you all, and thank you, Daniel. Yeah. Yeah, it was a pleasure, Mariam. Thank you. <laughs>